Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's my pleasure to have uh, Carlos Arguilles here uh, from uh, Argentina, CONICET. And uh, he is connected, for example, to Achilles, uh, who's also here, and uh, her group. And uh, he will talk about uh, fermionic dark matter profiles. So I'm curious what he will tell us. Carlos, okay. please, the floor is yours. OK, Sven, uh, thank you. Uh, well, uh, yes, um, first I would like to thank uh, Angeles uh, and the group of Miguel Sanchez Conde uh, for giving me the opportunity to give this seminar at AFT. And yes, I will talk about fermionic dark matter profiles. And it, uh, the um, results I will talk today will be based on the work you see at the bottom here with the links, on some few papers we have published in the last years. And it has been done in collaboration with the, some part of the group of uh, the ECRANET uh, here at the International Center of Relativistic Astrophysics in Italy, um, which from uh, Remo Ruffini, Jorge Rueda, Andreas Crut, and Edward Becerra from the Institute, well, Angeles, would we have um, done some uh, collaboration with applications of this model, and my students, uh, Rafael and Manuel Diaz. Okay, uh, let's start with the outline of the presentation. Um, so first I will talk some preliminarities about the cold dark matter. Uh, then I will move to cell gravitating fermions as star matter in galaxies. That is how dark matter clamps in galaxies made of fermions. Uh, in this topic, I will talk about uh, entropy maximization uh, regarding the formation of these structures. Then uh, how you can obtain a, a novel core halo profile as an equilibrium system. Um, well, then we move to talk about stability and lifetime of these cell gravitating systems in a cohological framework. Uh, we'll discuss briefly the caloric curves of cell gravitating system and their stability. And then uh, this is uh, one of the, let's say, highlights of uh, our Profiles that uh, you can have a supermassive black hole formation scenario from dark matter core collapse and that I will discuss a bit. And then the applications. Uh, well, application to the Milky Way and the galaxy center. I will discuss the Milky Way rotation curve and high density, if there is a possibility to have a high density fermion core at the center. And then we move to universality of these dark matter profiles from dwarfs to elliptical to galaxy clusters, and then uh, conclusions on open questions. OK, uh, let's start about uh, to talk about the success of the lambda cold dark matter paradigm on larger scales. Uh, well, you know, uh, cold dark matter is a cold and collisionless fluid. And from the astrophysical observations, uh, including CMD, BAO, Lyman Alpha Forest, and local distribution of galaxies, which ranging from horizon scales to the typical scale between galaxies are all consistent with the universe uh, was seeded by a scale invariant primordial spectrum, and which is dominated by 70% uh, of dark energy, followed by 25% approximately of dark matter, and only 5% of baryons plus radiation. This is a known story as the lambda called dark matter. And uh, in the picture of the right, you can see uh, which is understand, understood today as the, one of the most compelling evidence uh, for the existence of uh, non baryonic matter in the CMB, which is that the, um, in order to explain these temperature fluctuations uh, of the CMB, uh, you know that the cosmological perturbation theory, uh, you have an underlying uh, distribution of uh, matter density on top of which you have these temperature fluctuations and in such a way that if you uh, for example, do not uh, account for this 25% of dark matter. And let's say you go less and less in these uh, light blue curves here, you start to um, be quite off the data of CMB. And for example, the relation to the second and third peak in the CMB temperature fluctuation uh, differ totally with respect to the, the observed one. Therefore, well, uh, this is, as you know, uh, understood as the most compelling evidence for non-baryonic dark matter, non-baryonic matter, sorry. And uh, well, now let's move about how this dark matter uh, can clamp in galaxies. Uh, well, let's start in terms of fermions. Uh, this talk will be based. So let's start to discuss uh, collisionless relaxation and how they can achieve a maximum entropy cross-grain. 
So uh, let's start to talk about the blast of Poisson equation. So you know as the dark matter when it is treated as a collisionless particle system, is described by the mean field blast of Poisson, which is this equation here on the left. Uh, this is the no other than the master Boltzmann equation with a zero on the right hand side. Uh, this equation is coupled to Poisson, so the Laplacian of gravitational potential, and uh, which is proportional to the mass density of particles as an integral of the phase space distribution f. Well, this is at fine grain level, right? But interestingly, um, this equation can be treated at coarse grain level. So when making um, uh, decomposing the fine grain distribution function, you can decompose as a, an average f bar plus a fine grain fluctuations, and uh, then take a, take a local average of this Blasso Poisson, and you obtain a new equation for um, for a coarse grain distribution function, which is of the form of uh, convection diffusion equation, uh, where you have a, a diffusion current J uh, at the right hand side, which uh, has into account also the um, dynamics of the microscopics of the of the of the phase space. Of course, uh, to find J is very complicated. An explicit uh, expression of J and the diffusion coefficient is very complicated, but uh, this uh, can be done in a, uh, to put, start to put constraint on Shea, applying uh, the first and second law of thermodynamics. So uh, you ask for the conservation of uh, total energy and uh, the S dot, uh, the second law. So uh, the course when entropy increases, this is of the form of a, of a Lindenberg entropy, which has into account uh, not only the, the mixing, of, but also the complement of the of the mixing of the phase space, and this is called the so-called maximum entropy production principle, which was first uh, uh, um, explained by Shavani, the expert on these topics, extending the Lindenbell picture that he in the uh, famous paper of Lindenbell of the sixties, where he deal uh, with violent relaxation, but at an heuristic level. So Shavani. Uh, was able to uh, start from Blasso Poisson, um, take average of the coarse grain, the, the lead to uh, this convection diffusion equation, and then uh, and then apply this maximum entropy production principle. So the important point here is that during this evolution, the system will maximize its rate of, of entropy creation while satisfying the constraint fulfilled by the dynamics. So. Uh, in this paper, Giovanni, he applied that maximum entropy production principle plus quasi-linear quasi theory. Uh, it is possible to write equation one, so this one here, uh, of course, grain level, as a, a modified Landau equation in, in this way, in this way here on the equation of the left. Uh, and when J is a constant, so you have a, a constant uh, diffusion current, uh, you can find and a stationary solution, a coarse grain phase space, a stationary solution of this uh, modified Landau equation, which is of the form of Fermi Dirac type with a cutoff in energy. This is, uh, yes, here, a stationary solution, including for evaporation. And this is the generalization of the Linden Bell distribution function. Probably some of you remember uh, Linden Bell find. Uh, find another kind of uh, stationary solution, coarse grain, at relaxation, but when J is equal zero, if you put J, the current equal zero, you have uh, the standard Fermi Dirac coarse grain phase space density in here. But this is a generalization, including for escape of particles. Uh, well, as you remember, uh, Linden Mel uh, developed this theory for stellar systems. But uh, some dec a few decades later, uh, binary relaxation mechanism was extended in cool in this paper uh, for indistinguishable particles. So, for example, neutrinos. And, uh, for example, in the case of fermions, um, the, this maximum occupation number will be fixed by the Pauli principle with the standard form of proportional to the particle mass to the four over h cube. So, uh, the objective of this uh, now uh, of our model that we present here is starting from a coarse grain phase space density at violent relaxation, accounting for the Pauli principle and for the evaporation effects, and start to build uh, dark matter halos as equilibrium systems out of this uh, distribution function. 
First, one important, important concept that fermions under self-gravity do admit a perfect fluid approximation. And it was shown in the seminal paper of uh, Finan Bonasola in the late 60s by Solin einstein -Girek. Uh, I remember that the, this is not possible for bosons, for example, because bosons condensate, and uh, if they are not, uh, if you don't have some extra self-interaction, they cannot be described by the perfect fluid. Okay, so, but in the case of fermions, it is possible to solve the Einstein equations for a semi-degenerate gas of fermions in hydrostatic equilibrium. So we have to uh, solve the TOV equations. And uh, these are the equations you have to solve to, in order to uh, obtain a, a, a self gravitating system of semi-degenerate gas of fermions in hydrostatic equilibrium. The first is the mass equation, the second is the TOV equation, then the, the rest of the equation of the uh, Klein and Tolman conditions, which is uh, first and zero laws of thermodynamics in general relativity, and the later is the conservation of energy along a geodesics. Uh, this equation are written in this um, kind of weird manner because it's uh, are written in the dimensionless form. That's why I just uh, put uh, because it's the our equation with are finally are solved uh, numerically. And uh, the important point is that the source of this uh, pressure and density are given as a, as a parametric equation of states. So, and as I told you, these are as integrals of the phase space distribution. Uh, F that I show below, which is a Fermi direct type uh, coming from uh, violent relaxation with a cutoff in energy. Uh, first point to notice is that this is a not barotropic equation of a state. It's not a P the raw of raw, but it's a parametric because it has into account the constant, uh, yes, uh, temperature effects uh, and also uh, degeneracy. So the three parameters will be, the, we will start with a regular solution at the center, so not singular, so the mass will start to zero. And uh, well, we will start with a degeneracy, which is a chemical potential over kappa T, theta, which is positive. Uh, this, I recall that if you start with the, the degeneracy lower than zero, you obtain the Boltzmann. Uh, distribution, but we we want to stay in Fermi, so in Fermi, in Fermi direct, so we stay with la, uh, theta zero larger than zero. Uh, central temperature, beta zero, this is the, the temperature parameter, and W zero, the cutoff parameter. These are the three uh, free parameters, and uh, we will have a four parameter, which is the particle mass, uh, and uh, we will uh, Put this parameter with a sub zero when they are evaluated at the center of the configuration. So we have a, a model for four free parameters, or once you fix the particle mass, you have three free parameters uh, in order to build this halo. So, one important question is which is the most general solution of, of density distribution of dark matter out of this equation? Well, the most general distribution you have to solve a highly nonlinear couple ordinary differential equation we have shown before. And so by solving that equation with a boundary condition, taking into account halo observables, for example, that, that tens of kiloparsec, you have a mass of 10 to 11, typical of spiral galaxies, you obtain this kind of profile, this kind of core halo, because at the center, you have a, a degenerate core uh, where the pressure is um, all, is hold against gravity by degeneracy pressure. This is due to the Pauli principle involved. And then you have a transition to Boltzmann, which really resembles the pseudo of thermal sphere, uh, which uh, matches in a window of radii approximately the two typical dark matter profiles, as in Astor and FW. Uh, but uh, the difference is that uh, through the very center, you have this core, which we have to see. Uh, it can uh, represent something in nature. So uh, important point is that the, this dense core fulfills, fulfills the quantum condition, as I told you. So the, the thermal de Broglie wavelength is larger than the interparticle mean distance here in the core. This happens for the generalities larger than 10, as we will study. And uh, importantly is that the dark matter profiles depend on the particle mass. Mainly the characteristic of the core will depend on the particle mass, as we will see next. So. Uh, I recall a bit, so starting by a, a 
course, when phase based distribution function out of violin relaxation for maximization entropy principle, you can build uh, halos of fermions in hydrostatic equilibrium in general relativity, uh, in which you, uh, of course, you can do in Newton, Newtonian gravity. We will do in general relativity because you will see later that these cores can be so dense that they can also collapse. But uh, this I will show you next. So um, let's talk about a bit about stability. This is an important point. We have uh, recently published a paper on this. So uh, an important question is how a cell gravitating system of this collision storm can reach the steady state. Dynamical stability, which is uh, when you have a stationary solution F in the phase space uh, out of these kinetic equations are called dynamically stable solution. It does not imply necessarily that the solution are thermodynamic stability, are thermodynamical stable. Uh, so some, some dynamical stable solution are more likely in nature than others. So in order to find dynamically and thermodynamically stable configurations, you, we need to solve, uh, we need to uh, maximize the global entropy of these hydrostatic uh, balls of fermions. And uh, which is this uh, small s is the entropy density, which is given by the gift relation. And importantly, is that the pressure and density and particle density are, as you know, as I showed before, given by the integrals of this phase space, phase space distribution. Now, uh, as you will probably uh, now imagine is that the, the form that I show is, is related to the problem of the first order variation is entropy. So if you solve a first order entropy variation, you can obtain uh, the TOB and the, 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 the mass equation of equilibrium. But in order to find stability, you need to, to solve a second order variation uh, equation in entropy. Uh, but interestingly, this, uh, of course, this will be a, a very complicated problem in this case, because the, the mainly because of the, the equation of state is uh, non-parametric, is parametric, so it's non-barotropic. But uh, you, we can solve this problem in an elegant manner using the CATS criterion, CATS, uh, which relies only in the derivative of a caloric curve. So you have to build a sequence, uh, a series of equilibrium uh, uh, in a caloric curve, which is total energy versus inverse of temperature. And this is done at total particle number n. So this has been solved uh, recently for the first time uh, last year when it was published this year in this paper, uh, which is for the case of typical halos of uh, 10 to 10 solar masses. And this is the caloric curve here. So first, uh, I would like to say that uh, this caloric curve probably resembles, for some of you which have heard about the gravothermal catastrophe, it, it resembles the, the caloric curve of Boltzmannian distribution. And you know that, for example, it has been uh, applied for many decades to globular clusters with this, uh, uh, this kind of uh, caloric curves has a, a spiral here, spiraling, and it leads to the gravothermal catastrophe. But interestingly, uh, when you add, uh, when you uh, work with fermions or on poly principle, this spiral, the caloric curve, the upper spiral, uh, spirals out, so and wins, uh, and then spirals out and then regain stability. So stable solutions in this caloric curve are uh, marked by blue and unstable. All the families of an unstable solution will be uh, labeled with dot violet, dot purple. So, um, so uh, two important points about this caloric curve is that it uh, is, is built along a series of equilibrium solutions and that uh, depending on how are the derivatives of this caloric curve, you will obtain stable solutions of this uh, uh, gravity disease of fermions or unstable. The stable will be either local maximum or global maximum of entropy, are the, and the unstable will be subtle points or minimum of entropy. So the key question is, is it possible to find, uh, you have to fix an energy, right? For example, this dashed line here is uh, one example we will show here. And you have to see all the different profiles that arise from fixing this energy. For example, at this point here, uh, stable, 
this point two unstable and point three and uh, see which of these profiles has uh, an application to their matter halos regarding observable. Another point of this, uh, this I will show, but then, then I will show another point is that uh, interesting is that this uh, point C is the last stable configuration. And then uh, it, uh, it is uh, never regains again the stability is forever unstable. I will show later about this turning point here. And this is the relativistic collapse that will arise. But let's focus on these three solutions, one, two, and three, and let's see the, the shape of the profiles of, of the stable and unstable. So um, okay, uh, yes. Before I show the profiles out of this uh, caloric curve, uh, how to answer an important question with how do we obtain a realistic dark matter halo? via this method, which is I, I, I talked before is, well, you have to be sure that you have to calculate the power spectrum in a given, let's say, as we were working at the particle of interest here, our KeV, as I will show. Uh, so we have to solve uh, the a warm dark matter cosmology and find the linear power spectrum, then apply a projector to obtain the virial mass at given uh, redshift. Uh, you can do this by standard techniques of projectors. So use the mass variance, and this is a one window of function of uh, aberration, uh, standard of this projector. And then you uh, ask that this variance, uh, when this variance is larger than the critical over density, uh, given by the spherical collapse, uh, you can uh, so you can have halos uh, that uh, with mass. So halos with mass smaller than this uh, threshold mass m star will uh, form uh, will start to form at this redshift at a given redshift uh, statistically let's say abundantly at one sigma so but from this projector is a standard that you can find in uh, this given cosmology uh, the virial mass and radius of these typical halos for example this has been done, uh, this black curve here, which is nearly not finished, is for colder matter. We have solved this uh, with, the, well, with the class code in warm dark matter, two warm dark matter cosmology for 10 and 48 keV. Of course, uh, at these um, scale masses, uh, are, the cosmologies are nearly coincident. coincident. And uh, so we will pick a value here. We will choose a value in this cosmology, uh, which is about, 5, 10 to 10 solar masses, this green triangle corresponding with a virial radius of about a few tens of kiloparsec. And this is arising from projector in, in cosmology in a warm dark matter. So then we use this value. And in order to fix the total energy of the caloric curve I showed before and uh, study all the stable family of solution in agreement with, with this virial constraint. And so these three solutions I showed before uh, that uh, correspond to a given energy in the caloric curve are these three families of solution. The first, which is stable and uh, corresponds to a dilute Fermi configuration similar to King, uh, King solution, which is also has been shown, but which it can be shown easily that is uh, very similar to Barker profile. This is solution one. Uh, then we have an unstable solution, which is of core halo shape, which is this dot solution here, which is unstable. And, uh, and this solution three, which is again stable, uh, and this is of core halo shape. We will see, therefore, the, the important aspect of this is that uh, we have checked that it is possible to obtain, to obtain these core halo profiles, which are stable. And of astrophysical interest, as, as I will show later, but also you can see from here, because the total mass of this is, uh, is this uh, 5, 10 to 10, and it has uh, this radio, this virial radio here, is few tens of kiloparsec corresponding precisely with this uh, virial constraint here. Therefore, we have obtained a, a stable new form of profile. We have count for Pauli principle, which is stable 
as well as one. Of course, one is also astrophysical and unstable, but we are interested in this new kind of profile, what, what, what Kant gives to us. So let's move to the left. Well, it has been published recently here. Uh, I have also press release on that. And well, um, so as I told you, another, another very important point of this analysis is that the, the course of these new profiles can be so densely packed at the center that uh, above a critical mass, the degeneracy pressure may no longer uh, support its own weight and undergo core collapse. And interestingly is that the core collapse of this central dark matter core can be of the mass of typical supermassive black holes. So, uh, this this uh, thermodynamic mechanism of uh, formation of cellular dating system of fermions can lead to a, a formation of, a, 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 let's say, a last stable solution, which is uh, the peak here as the point C. This is because below this solution C, there is no accessible state in this caloric curve of energy. Here below, there is none. For example, if you start from here, you can phase transition to a core halo profile here because you have some uh, energy allow the region. But when you reach C, <coughs> sorry, which is a core halo profile, the core here is critical. The way to uh, demonstrate this is via the central density versus uh, core mass plot when you show that the solution C reached the maximum. So even if you increase the central density, the core mass will not increase and will start to decrease. This is the typical behavior when you reach a core collapse in a, in a cell gravitating system. This is done for a 48 kel of mass. And uh, interestingly, the critical mass of collapse here of the core is about 10 to 8 solar masses. So the, the conclusion of this is that uh, it is possible to uh, form a uh, a halo of dark matter in which the center has collapsed to a supermassive black hole via the uh, core collapse of this dark matter core. More importantly is that this can occur within the high gravity universe uh, when halos start to form, because as I showed you, we apply the press sector uh, at high gravity, so at big elization, and without the prior to star formation. So this can happen prior to star formation and with, without the need to invoke black hole seeds with unrealistic super internal accretion, because you only need for this uh, dark matter core to achieve a critical mass. Uh, okay, this up to now, it has been quite theoretical, uh, a presentation of the model and the equations. And then uh, let's move to applications to data, uh, which we have a lot of them in the Milky Way. Okay, let's recall the components of a, of a typical spiral galaxy. So you have a central parsec, which is governed by a dark compact object of 4 million solar masses in the Milky Way. Well, then the central kilo parsec, which is governed by a spheroidal bulge. And, uh, further is the central 10 kilo parsec governed by a flat disk. And finally, the outermost region is governed by a dark matter spherical halo, with, which in uh, 25 kiloparsec fulfills with approximately 10 to 11 solar mass. In the bottom right, you have the data of, of the rotation curve in linear scale here, where they build this famous uh, almost flat uh, curve. And in the left, you have in logarithmic, that's why this weird shape, uh, as obtained by software. And I want to emphasize a bit in this picture because um, is interestingly, Sofue was able to uh, include data until the first parsec here, which is in the inner bulge. Of course, here you have a non-circular, not fully circular motion. You have some streams uh, in the some, sorry, some bar uh, uh, with streaming motion at the and at these central regions. But uh, this error bar, uh, this sorry, these error bars at the center accounts for this. Um, non-circular motions, and you can have, a, in any case, an average circular velocity of this form. 
Uh, therefore, we can move, sorry, we can move e even inner in the, with the data in the Milky Way and enter in the uh, milliparsec scales where we will find a young S stars and molecular gas, which over, uh, obeys a nearly Keplerian law on the velocity. Uh, well, uh, these observations, as you know, has implied that the central gravitational object of, at the center is about 4 million solar masses and uh, has to be at least within uh, below milliparsec scales in order to uh, explain these orbits. Of course, if it is singular and it is a black hole, uh, the innermost radio will be the Schwarzschild radio. Right. Uh, okay, the observations are, are done with near infrared techniques, as uh, in the papers of the uh, people of Gillesen, and the gravity collaboration as well, more recently. And uh, you can also include for the for other objects, which is the so-called G2 cloud, which I will show later, which is uh, has a precenter nearly the same as S2, which is the closest uh, star, uh, one of the closest stars around Sagittarius A. Okay, so of course, uh, of course, uh, as you know, uh, this uh, data provided by the German team of guests, uh, and these people here has uh, was awarded by the Nobel Prize last year, uh, evidencing the existence of a supermassive compact object of four million masses. Of course, uh, it is uh, widely accepted that this should be a black hole, but uh, here we will show. Uh, if it can be interpreted differently. So in terms of these fermionic or halo profiles, I show one interesting question is, can the overall gravitational potential of this core halo or dark matter explain the rotation curve of the Milky Way as well as the dynamics of the S stars without invoking the central black hole? Well, uh, one hint is that uh, you need to solve the boundary condition problem of the differential equation I showed before, and uh, try to see if there exists a solution where the mass of the core be 4 million solar masses, and the mass in the outer region of the halo also fulfills with constraints from observations. Therefore, uh, the answer is yes. Interestingly, the answer is yes. So, uh, it is possible to find not only one, but a family of profiles, of core halo profiles, of halos made of fermions, where the core in this, for example, in this solution uh, from gray, dashed grain to continuous black, the central core, uh, all of this core have 4 million solar masses, this is the first point. But the larger the particle mass, the more concentrated or compact the core is. So for Fourier cap, you have a, a quite concentrated core such that uh, this S2 star, this upper mass, such so that the, the, you can start to explain the average circular velocity of these S stars and all the way to the critical mass of 345 keV, where the core is critical and is uh, going to collapse to a black hole, but made of dark matter in this case, when you can also explain the Keplerian behavior. This is regarding the Keplerian behavior. Then the outer part, as, as you know, this kind of profile uh, has a transition to Boltzmann regime. And therefore in this transition, the rotation curve reaches a minimum. Interestingly, so do not spoil the fitting done by the baryonic matter, which is this bulge in green and the dashed green in the disc. And then rise again to uh, account for the dark matter halo in the outer part. And we have shown that uh, so the family of this uh, thermionic profile from 48 keV to 345 can fit the full rotation curve by Sofoe, the outer and the innermost, uh, and accounting also for the dynamics of the S stars. Important to say here is that uh, there is no black hole in this solution, no black hole, only continuous configuration of dark matter uh, from center to periphery. Uh, okay, this is an uh, NFW comparison using here in the halo. Okay, uh, if we make a zoom on the rotation curve, we can and compare it with NFW, we can see that both uh, both profile in, in red is the baryons plus uh, the, the so-called RAR model, 
uh, our model of fermions, and in black is the uh, the baryonic class NFW. So both can fit very well, the, similarly well, the rotation curve. And uh, and okay, now as I showed you before, the, it is possible to to obtain one of these dense cores of fermion to work as an alternative to the central black hole scenario, but can we do better? Meaning, uh, can we take, can we reproduce the geodesics of the S2 and the rotation and the radial velocity observed of S2 very recently and also of the G2 and compare with the black hole? Well, we have done this last year, but first to say that any alternative model of a central black hole must explain uh, the, the huge data set that uh, there is available here from BLT, K12, and Shemini North, and Subaru. We have taken all this data and uh, we have to um, explain. So the multi-year accurate astrometric, astrometric data of S2 around Sagittarius A, including the relativistic redshift that was confirmed by the gravity collaboration a couple of years ago. Also, we would like to reproduce the available data of the orbit and redshift of the other object, G2 cloud. And uh, if it is possible uh, to uh, reproduce the G2 post pericenter pass as deceleration, because it, it has been shown that the, this G2 cloud, after passing the pericenter around Sagittarius Air, decelerates. And in order to explain this with a black hole, you need to add a, a drag force on this object. So uh, we also want to, to see if uh, we can explain all of this uh, without this drag force. So uh, the first, we take the S2. So interestingly, this, uh, this dense, core, dense core of fermions with a mass around 50 keV can explain very well all the astrometric data right, uh, right ascension declination of the position of the S2 around Sagittarius A. So in red is the, our model of fermions and in dashed blue is the Schwarzschild black hole. And um, the theoretical models have been calculated by solving the equation of motion of a test particle in the gravitational field, as I told you, of a, of a black hole. And we obtain a, a chi-square, average chi-square in the black hole of three, of around three for this mass. And interestingly, we can obtain an even better uh, comparable, let's say statistically, but a bit slightly better uh, chi-square when working with this uh, dense core of fermions of uh, 56 keV. Okay, then uh, one would like also to reproduce the line of sight radial, radial velocity. As you know, this S2 star, when it's uh, approaching to us, it's, uh, it's rising here until a few thousands of kilometers per second, and then it's uh, preceding us here. And uh, interestingly, the S2, as you probably know, uh, the, the S2 star uh, complete fully his uh, the orbit because the the period is about 16 years, and it has been observed by more than 20 years. So the, it's a full orbit of data. And uh, well, interestingly, the, um, both models can explain very well this radial velocity. And well, also one would like to uh, show the relative excess. Interestingly, this uh, dashed line in the picture from the right here represents the the excess of red, I mean, the, the redshift, if you will work with Newtonian gravity, right? With, with an object in Newtonian gravity. So you cannot explain, this was a, a key result from the gravity collaboration, uh, where if you will work with Newton, you cannot explain this redshift excess due to the general relativistic effects in the, in the radial velocity of this star. And, as our model is also general relativistic, we can also explain this uh, relative excess as uh, the Schwarzschild black hole. Okay, then, but this is the, to us was uh, a surprise when we, when we was wondering this and uh, when we took this G2 cloud, because G2 cloud has uh, not complete an orbit yet, 
and it has a presenter very similar to S2. These are the data. Uh, so in the in the position in the sky, both models can explain similarly well the data as you see here. But the point is the line of sight, the radial velocity, because sorry, because the radial velocity in the case of the black hole here is the the blue dashed. Uh, after pericenter passage, the, you cannot fit the data. Here you can see there is a deceleration. And you can see here the residuals that uh, in the case of the black hole only you, you, you are quite off the, the average zero, zero. And in the case of our model, we can, uh, for this particular mass, we can fit perfectly without adding a drag force. Of course, in the black hole paradigm, this also can be explained, but you have to add a, a drag force by an equation this, which is hypothetical because at this small scale, there is no known uh, the, totally fully the, the disk. The accretion, and so you have to start to make a hypothesis. But in this case, uh, well, in this case, uh, the hypothesis is to work with uh, a set, this uh, new core halo profiles of the matter, and you can explain this. Uh, of course, this the chi square is considerably better, is below one in our case, and in the black hole uh, only is uh, is quite large. So, uh, well, so. Up to here, I have shown that uh, it is possible to apply successfully these core halo profiles, uh, which can explain the rotation curve of the Milky Way in the outer part by this dilute regime, nearly Bos Boltzmannian. But in the center, the fact that the, this account for Pauli principle, the, the fermions uh, has a degenerate uh, state and can also work as an alternative to the black hole scenario. But uh, one important question is, can you um, apply this kind of model for the same dark matter particle mass to other galaxy types? Well, we have answered this uh, uh, positively uh, and say that the same fermionic model can be applied to other galaxy types from dwarfs to ellipticals for the same particle mass. This is, uh, the, this is possible by making a full coverage of the free parameters of the theory, so the temperature, the degeneracy. And well, uh, for example, in dwarf, we have taken a typical constraint on halo. Of course, here, as we are dealing with distant galaxies, we cannot have the full data in the Milky Way, but we can take a typical halo scale constraints. Uh, for example, in dwarfs, 400 parsec and three to seven. In spirals, uh, typically, 50 kiloparsec radius and mass 10 to 12 and ellipticals, uh, well, these numbers are large. And in all the cases, we have shown that there exists a family of solutions, this core halo solution, that uh, <coughs> can explain this uh, constraint here. So uh, importantly is what, what can we obtain information of these cores, of these cores here, of, of dark matter in each of these cases. Well, first point is that we see that, uh, for example, in the case of dwarfs, there are solutions, for example, this one in, in blue, where the core is about 10 to five solar masses. So you have a, you have a, you can have account for the constraint in the halo while the core of dark matter has 10 to five solar masses, which is typical value of intermediate mass, the so-called intermediate mass black hole. Here naturally arising uh, with this uh, dark matter course. In spirals, typical cores are uh, out, uh, 10 to 7, up to 10 to 8, and in ellipticals, the same. So, uh, so the model uh, has predictive power in this case because, uh, as I show you, the, the central core masses provide alternative either to intermediate mass black hole up to supermassive black hole of 10 to 8. And, uh, and uh, you, you can ask to try to fit or be in agreement with a correlation that exists, observational correlation that exists between the total mass of the galaxy, the dark matter, versus the, 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 the black hole at the center, which is a, a Ferrarese relation between the total dark mass and the central dark mass. Uh, this is not the sigma M relation, this is another relation she found. And, and, uh, we have found that they always exist a family of solution that can uh, be uh, match this correlation. 
and uh, yes, for 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 a certain window of three parameters. This is the Milky Way in the black, in the violet diamond here. So, uh, as I told you, the, the important point is that the general the general pressure support course can become gravitationally stable, reaching the critical mass, and collapse to a black hole of 10 to 8. Here, you can reach up to 10 to 8. As I shall show below, for galaxies below, let's say, 10 to 9, 10 to 8, in solar masses, so dwarfs, so small galaxies, you can no longer reach, reach the critical value here. This is the core mass. This is the critical value. And, and uh, you obtain smaller and smaller core masses, but not critical, not collapsing. So this is I'll show you. You can obtain a critical mass of 10 to 8, uh, which uh, for larger galaxies may provide the seed of supermassive black hole formation in active galaxies, in quite larger active galaxies that can reach up to 10 to 9 in solar masses. But in this case, uh, you, you may achieve by a subsequent accretion, but but starting with a quite heavier seed. Uh, therefore, you don't need to invoke for this uh, uh, super Eddington rate. OK, so uh, our, our not claim, but our suggestion is that out of a just, just uh, obtained out of the result I have shown, is that may it be the case that normal galaxies, let's say the ones not having not, not active, let's say, without <clears throat> active nuclei in your sheds, maybe form instead of black holes of this uh, dense dark matter configuration at the center, ranging from uh, the cores having from 10 to 5 up to 10 to 7 solar masses, while active galaxies with half sheds and, and, and hard X-ray emission should be a black hole, but the black hole should be the collapse of the central cores of dark matter. So this is um, what we found an interesting uh, possible way of interpreting this because it not only uh, explained the, the possible nature of supermassive black hole in the early universe forming from dark matter, but also uh, accounting for the center of smaller galaxies. Uh, okay, finally we move to conclusions. So, the, let's say the main conclusion is that if you account for the quantum nature, the dark matter in the relaxation and stability, by the way, which is not possible from end body simulations that use pseudo particles of much larger masses and classical, uh, you can have uh, these novel core halo profiles, which are stable, long lived, and may play a crucial role in helping to understand supermassive black hole formation. But there are some open questions. Uh, for example, uh, you, one may wonder why nature will select these core halo morphologies instead of Barker-like or King-like profiles. Well, there is a, a possible way to understand this, which is that uh, the conditions in order to reach these core halo profiles, which correspond to metastability, because these are a local maximum of entropy, are more likely to be achieved in nature than global, that uh, global maximum of entropy as the king profiles, because they have to uh, 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 underwent a, a smaller entropy barrier in order to reach this local maximum of entropy and stay and live there very long in time in the in cosmology, for cosmological time scale. This has been uh, argued interesting in this paper by Shamani. And for the first time, we showed that indeed these uh, local maximum entropy profiles and long live can be linked with uh, astrophysical dark matter halos. And, and another important conclusion of this analysis is that this uh, for 50 keV, these core halo profiles, which account for Pauli principle and escape of particles, can explain the rotation curve of galaxies while providing an alternative to the central black hole in normal to small galaxies. Uh, open questions is which is the nature, which may be the nature of these fermions? Uh, or, or which standard model extension can account for these particles? Well, uh, one possibility we have analyzed is uh, to model these fermions as right-handed neutrinos with dark sector interactions. We have shown that the, in, with uh, this model, you can be in agreement with X-ray interrelation constraint and valid cluster constraints in this work here. We have collaborated with Angeles from AFT. And 
Another open question interesting is uh, how 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 will the are the astrophysical consequences of dealing with the accretion of luminous matter around this dense fermion cores? Well, uh, one should work with the simulations, including for hydrodynamics. And it's not been done yet. Uh, and but another possibility is to, is to study strong lensing ar around this object. We have done a work. Uh, in this, in this sense, and showing that they, instead of uh, forming, uh, for example, in, in this uh, regular course, instead of forming a shadow, a black hole shadow, you form a Einstein rings, so a, a ring, but uh, with uh, different uh, different intensity respect to the shadow. But it is possible to form this object. Uh, well, thanks a lot for your attention, and that's all the questions. Thanks a lot, Carlos. Very interesting, uh, and for me at least, as a layman, also relatively clear. Are there mm -hmm. questions for Carlos or comments? Thomas. Yeah. <laughs> hi. Um, hi, Carlos. Um, Hello. Yeah, I, I was wondering if um, if you could go back to um, you know the, the comparison between. Um, Numerical simulations and 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 and, and, and these profiles. I mean, um, ah, what, one what, of the first slides. No, 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 no. Just, or... just you know, not not the first slide. But I mean, just I was wondering what uh, qualitatively explains the difference between um, um, uh, NFW profiles that you find in simulations and these these profiles. Is is this really the um, the difference in scales and the the fact that uh, quantum effects are not uh, accounted for in, in, in numerical simulations? Yeah, sure. Uh, this, this is a very good question, of course. Very. Because, I mean, I, I thought that, for instance, some people try to understand the, the NFW profile in terms of uh, violent relaxation and things like that. So yeah. I, I, I was wondering what, what would lead to, to you know, such, such different morphologies. Okay. Yes, this is a very good question, and it is an open question. Uh, yeah. But I can, I, uh, yes, uh, but no, but I can tell you some insights from my yeah, what's your take experience. On yes. So, um, okay. So, first point, as you said, is that uh, I mean, at least let's start to understand the, the, the important differences. That NFW is n body simulation. So, we use either if you start with Blas of Poisson because they solve Blas of Poisson in a discrete way. And you can work with pseudo particles of millions of solar masses. And then you start to, at three level uh, supercomputer, you start to see the effect of soil gravity. But an important point is that, so first point, you, you solve Blas of Poisson only, and you work with classical particles. So this is a first difference, because in, in this kind of uh, maximum entropy production way of forming halos, you you, you start with, in the case of fermions, you consider the, the Pauli principle, mm -hmm. so the quantum nature of the particle is the first point. And second point is that, uh, is, is this, is that you obtain, you, you ask for a maximum entropy production, which is not uh, fully, as I understand, in n-body simulation, when they uh, analyze the evolution of course, uh, grain phase space in n-body simulation, they, they, increase, they increase entropy, but uh, as far as I know, there is no fully, maximization of entropy in, in this kind of uh, environment okay. simulation. Uh, so these are two, two hints. But uh, people are starting to, to study again these problems of uh, related to Linden Bell and maximization of entropy. For example, a few months ago was a paper of uh, other uh, Spanish uh, colleagues. Uh, well, I, I don't remember now, sorry, the name, but it uh, was published in ANA uh, from Salis Entropy, how to form cores in the center of galaxies from maximum entropy production. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. More questions? But uh, even, even, so just another comment is that uh, in this case, besides the difference of forming a halo within body or, or with maximum entropy production, to me is that uh, accounting for Pauli principle leads to this new family of profiles with cores. And just one comment, which I forgot to say, I want to say, but forgot, is that these profiles probably some of you remember uh, that arise naturally while working with bosons. 
with fuzzy dark matter or, or, or action like dark matter, where you can have this um, solitonic uh, behavior at the core and a halo at the outer. Well, this is analogous, but for fermions. Just, just wanted to say that also. Yeah, just, just to say, well, thanks, uh, Carlos, for, for the talk. Uh, just to say that this, well, as you know, very interesting to have an, a profile, a hair profile that is not, you know, it, it's very, it's, it's um, uh, I mean, the result that we have is just a theoretical, you no know, uh, arguments and not from simulations. So I think it's very interesting and it's uh, one or few models, very, very few models that we had in the literature just to, to define the hello profile in this way. So, I mean, it's just that I, I listen again. The, I mean, all the, I, of course, I know about it, <laughs> about, uh, about the, the, the different arguments and everything, but it's very nice to listen again and understand how you can, uh, in your, in, in, I mean, in your different study, how you are improving the, the model and just to feed the data. And I think it's, just to say that. Okay, thank you, Angeles. Yes. Yeah, we were happy to, to feed so much data also. We're not expecting and unhappy. <laughs> Actually, I would have a question. I don't know whether this only uh, shows my ignorance or whether I missed something. Um, you yeah. are using a quite low mass of your dark matter particle here, right? Uh, yeah. 50 keV. Um, did you? say to which mass range you could apply your methods or whether you are driven to this mass? I, maybe I, I just yes. missed the point. No, or... no, 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 no. Very important question. Yes, I say, it, but uh, not, uh, not at, at detail at this, this point. So yeah, this is good you, ans you an uh, answer this question. So yeah, so, uh, okay. The first motivation, let's say, to work with order 50 keV is that, of course, we are, you are not uh, obliged to work with this particle mass. But the, the interesting point of working with the 50 keV is the following, is that the only range of particle masses you can work with in order to have a, 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 this compact core at the center of the Milky Way to work as an alternative of the black hole is from 50 keV up to 340 keV. Mm -hmm. Because uh, in this case we are you are marginally inside the stupery center, stupery center in the in the case of 50 keV, and in the case of 300 you are collapsing to the black hole. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Which would be allowed, of course. No? Would be allowed. Yes, it's a possibility also to form a black hole. It's a possibility. Yes, uh, this is the motivation. But uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. I see. I know. Wait. And another point. Sorry. Another important point is the following is the following, uh, where, uh, yeah, before. Is this one, is that, uh, to me, this is a, a very strong point uh, that I really like of, of this theory is that, uh, look, if you start with this 50 K, for example, but you can put this particle mass and calculate the power spectrum from, from the coupling. You, you start with the coupling physics of the particle, calculate the power spectrum in this warm dark matter cosmology, and then, uh, 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 and, and you know it's a, it's a cosmology allowed by many constraints. For example, like man alpha, for example, um, yeah, CMB, of course, and BAO, and, uh, and then the same particle mass is the building block to form a halo. So this is a self-consistent because you start with the building block in the early universe. You evolve power spectrum, large scale structure formation. You go to small, small non-linear structure formation and end up in a halo with the same building block. And, uh, and uh, that's why it's interesting in this case because you are, uh, of course, I, I focus in this talk mainly on the halos, but uh, we, have sol we have sol this ambitious problem of starting with the, uh, with the power spectrum all the way to halos. Um, so, well, so just to say, because in cold dark matter, for example, for, I don't know, for WIMPs of GEV, of 10 GEV, 100 GV, you can also, of course, have power spectrum from large scale structure, but then in halos, because of it's, it's too cold, you know, start to form CASPI profiles, unless you start with the baryonic feedback, etc., which is, uh, but, uh, but uh, dark matter only, you have these, these problems in cold dark matter.
which are so-called small scale tensions to colder matter. Well, in this warmer matter, you have this nice uh, uh, point that you, you avoid many of these problems. Okay, thanks a lot. Are okay. there more questions or comments for Carlos? I have another one. Yeah, that, go ahead. That's okay. Um, I was wondering if you had like any plans to actually run some dedicated simulations, like like you know what people do for bosonic dark matter. Uh, mm. If there would be any way to you know gain more information on these. Yeah, yeah. Another very important question. Yeah, thank you. Yes, this would be a dream to do this. Uh, yeah, we would like. Uh, okay, there is up to now there is no as yet uh, known way to uh, solve a kind of uh, this similar equations that people use in fuzzy dark matter mm -hmm. to obtain this uh, this uh, solitonic uh, with the halo outside. Um, they work with the, this famous equation that that uh, Feynman liked to describe this, um, I forgot the name. Uh, well, there is a okay, way- So Schrodinger Poisson, right? So exactly, Schrodinger Poisson, but can be uh, normalized in a way and has another name. Yes, thank you. Schrodinger Poisson is the, the mother formula. Yes, exactly. Instead of Blaso, it's Schrodinger Poisson. This leads to another formulation that can be put in a, in a, in a n body simulation. Mm -hmm. But they have they are lucky enough that the solitons have the size of a kiloparsec, and then they just are, are just in the in, in the window of resolving this structure mm -hmm. in this simulation. Here, the fermions go inside milliparsec, right? And so it will be yeah, it will be very difficult. The, the only way I know what I really want to attack this problem in the near future with other colleagues is to to work at close box way. So. Uh, work with simulation but not not uh, cosmological right, yeah. but like yes. Yeah. Yeah. yes this is a possibility okay okay, okay. very nice then uh, i don't see any other questions thanks again for this interesting talk and uh, yeah hopefully we can see you in 3d as well at some point at the ift yeah. Yeah, it will be nice. It will be nice. Uh, so, well, now you touch this uh, thing. I, I planning to visit you in second semester if everything goes well. Good luck. I hope it works out. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I would like to visit you. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Okay.